I'm so excited uh, that you guys uh, shifted. This has been so exciting. Um, at, at MetaMask, we've been looking forward to to Filecoin and uh, and you know the, the many innovations that are coming uh, around. Um, so uh, I'm going to share a little bit about uh, MetaMask, where we're at, and how we're planning to integrate with Filecoin, uh, just like Juan said. So here, uh, here's my slides. First, I'm going to give a brief uh, kind of overview of what MetaMask is, and then I'm going to get into kind of how it ties together uh, with the Filecoin ecosystem. Um, so one, there's, there's a lot of ways that the web is broken today. Obviously, there's a lot of surveillance. Um, you know, every website has its own login system. Um, every, every website uh, has its own way of asking permissions. It's kind of inconsistent. You're kind of trusting them to respect those. Um, there's a, every, every website maybe has its own way of asking you for consent. You know, you get a GDPR prompt, but really it's the website's interface asking you for permission. So they always make it as annoying as possible to express your actual privacy preferences. Um, this is kind of just fundamental to when all the account data is, is part of the applications that you're interacting with. Um, oh yeah, it's also very hard to, un to unsubscribe from things, cancel accounts, all that kind of stuff. Um, MetaMask uh, is a different approach to logging into websites in general. Uh, our, we're a browser extension. Um, so yeah, the original version, we, we put in a browser extension in the wallet. It includes an account manager. Um, it, uh, it provides an API to every website that the user visits. And so the websites are able to request things like the disclosure of your account, uh, propose transactions, request spending limits uh, to perform their own operations, things like that. Um, it, we integrate with hardware wallets and, uh, and let people escalate their security as they'd like. Um, and that's, that's been great for the, for the Ethereum ecosystem. And you know, we've been doing it for four years and uh, the Ethereum ecosystem this year, we've, we've seen our user monthly active growth uh, about 4X. So we, we've got about a million monthly active users. These are people who are actually using applications. And um, so the, the heart of it is because we have user-owned accounts. We, we put the keys right in the browser. And every time one of these websites wants something from you, they, they have to ask you. And they have to ask you through MetaMask, uh, through your wallet. And so they're not providing the interface to get your consent. They're actually having to call an API method that then gives the user uh, an interface for getting that consent that is designed to get informed consent from the user. And so we kind of get to occupy this very interesting space where we're, we're kind of trying to come up with the most, the simplest, but most informative way of representing the kind of consent that's getting requested of you. Um, this lets you share information progressively. So this year we rolled out um, one of our best privacy features yet where you can actually, uh, you can even create new accounts when you connect to a website as soon as they request you to connect. Uh, you can connect multiple accounts um, and you can, uh, and we have a new permission system that came with that. And we're able to very easily iterate and add new permissions um, within that. So, so one website might just need permission to view your account uh, another might want to know what your favorite tokens are. Um, and actually, this permission system is built to be extensible partly to enable things like, like a Filecoin. And I'll, I'll get to how that is in a minute. So, so we've enabled a lot of different kinds of apps. This is a little overwhelming of a slide. But yeah, they're, they're the kinds of websites that have chosen to interact with blockchains uh, are, are many. So everything from payments. And, and swaps and there's voting and gaming and art collecting and all sorts of stuff. And with Filecoin, we can add file storage and retrieval to all of that and, and all the kinds of markets and ingenuities that build around that. Uh, if only there was an easy way to integrate Filecoin into a, a solution like this. Um, so uh, last year at DevCon, we announced we were working on something we call the MetaMask Snaps uh, plugin system. And what this is, it's basically, it builds on our permission system, but it critically adds one permission, which is the permission to add a plugin into the background, which itself gets restricted permissions. And so we're able to do things like uh, add a plugin that is responsible for a certain protocol's keys. And this allows us to have uh, external developers who are specialized in a certain field build out protocol support uh, for additional uh, chains like Filecoin. Um, so it's very easy to add these, um, our, our designs. I'm, I'm going to show you a little bit of, uh, of the current beta, uh, but we've, we've got designs where it, 
it is incredibly seamlessly integrated into the login flow. So if you don't have support for a given uh, blockchain in your wallet, when you connect to a website that would need it, it's simply asked for. Um, we, we're going to be able to recommend and help surface uh, reputable uh, signers to, to the user. And, and then you can kind of carry on. And it doesn't feel like you're necessarily adding uh, a lot of new software. And uh, so hopefully, it's as seamless as possible. So by default, these snaps get no authority except for what is listed in the permissions uh, list. So this is, this is a hypothetical list of permissions that a new blockchain would need. They need the ability to run a script um, to, oh, 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 well, to communicate maybe with another snap. They need to be, the ability to show you custom prompts to get permission to show, uh, permission to do their own transactions and the permission to communicate with the network. Uh, they also need permission to access the keys related to that uh, protocol. Um, so we've been working with Protocol Labs and a great uh, firm called Node Factory, who's been building the SNAP themselves. We're, we're focused on the platform, and then we're helping them integrate um, very smoothly and uh, to build a, a Filecoin SNAP. And this, this would be a thing that allows Filecoin to be added to MetaMask at runtime. And, and actually, it, it uses the Zondax signer under the hood. So if you were watching the previous talk, um, yeah, we're using those same uh, very rigorously tested uh, signing libraries. Um, so that's really great how these things are able to benefit from each other. Uh, so here's a here's a little video I took last night. Uh, we'll see see how it looks. Um, so we'll see. Um, here's their, their demo. When you click connect, it says I want to connect a plugin or install it. There it's asking for a set of permissions. At this point, we would also show you kind of the pedigree of the snap. And there you go. Um, we have now derived a Filecoin key from the user seed phrase. I'm now sending some autofill to a friend of mine. Um, I'm autofilling the gas and sending it. Um, right now, it's just a plain text confirmation, but the snap is defining this text. And so the user is able to coherently review the transaction. They send it off, and we get a, we get a, a content ID. I took it over to Phil Fox, the block explorer, and uh, it popped up. Um, so, so we have this working um, uh, today in beta. So the, the current beta is successfully generating BIP44 compatible accounts. So it's the same accounts that you would get um, if you were if you're generating from uh, another one of the current uh, Filecoin wallets, um, and and from the same MetaMask seed phrase. So if you back up your MetaMask seed phrase, you should have backups for every protocol you ever use on MetaMask. Um, and it can uh, initiate and complete Filecoin transactions from a website. It's showing basic confirmations. And then, oh yeah, also it's, uh, it shows the, uh, or I've got it actually right here. You can see the Filecoin in the list. So I'm running it right here. So you can see I've got some Filecoin in my MetaMask there. Um, so, uh, so yeah, that's, that's all great. Oh, but you know, this, is, this is kind of early. Um, this is obviously one of the most kind of security critical things we've ever done. So there's a few things that we are getting right before we roll this out to production. Um, we are planning to release a, you know, a kind of preview. So if developers want to start building applications, they could. Um, but you know, and, and actually, it's all online and open source today. Um, but some of the things we're doing before we launch production is we're going to let those confirmations be a bit richer. Um, we're integrating it into our latest production version. Um, that beta is actually on a slightly outdated version. Um, we're going to uh, handle the mechanism by which snaps receive updates. And uh, then we're also improving the user experience of having uh, accounts that come from multiple networks. Um, our, our current interface is a little bit naive to that. And so there's just a little bit of design work we need to do. Um, and, and actually, it's been a lot of fun kind of building for this, um, this multi-chain future. So. So that's the uh, the status of it. Um, we've uh, we've got docs on um, getting started with MetaMask in general. If you're interested, and if you're interested in playing with the Snaps beta, uh, we also have a, a wiki full of the latest uh, on our Snaps beta. Um, so that's uh, yeah, that, that's the slides I have to share, um, and I'm happy to take any questions. Yeah, that is fantastic. That's awesome. The whole community is super stoked about uh, having MetaMask support. So it's it's really fantastic to uh, to be checking, uh, seeing a preview of, of what's to come. Uh, yeah, maybe some questions. Um, uh, yeah, so the uh, before you mentioned your 
uh, testing a lot of things before you can roll out to production. Um, what do you do? You have any sort of like future uh, timeline, or you know, of course, knowing that software is software, and you know, things uh, always take a lot longer than, than one expects. Uh, but any idea of like when either people might be able to try it out, either uh, as full users or or maybe just developers in kind of like some kind of developer mode. Yeah, so so for just developers wanting to just play with it today, it's literally available now. Um, but it, you know, we can we can package it up and make it a little easier for developers to play with in, in the short term. Um, as for um, getting it out to production, um, I, I don't know. People who uh, follow um, MetaMask News know that we just launched one of our biggest features ever, and so as uh, we, we launched swaps in the app. Um, as we've concluded that, that ended up taking a bit more energy than we expected. Um, and, and so it, it did, I think, detract a little bit. Um, but we're, we're starting to, with the conclusion of that feature, we're basically going all in on this. And so I think that we're going to see a lot of progress happening on the Filecoin Snap um, a branch. And uh, I'm hoping that we have it, I, I'm hoping that we tuck it behind a feature flag or something in production, um, you know. If if we have our way and we we totally um, do incredible, you know, maybe maybe by the end of the year. But realistically, you know, it'll this will probably be a, a next year thing. That's awesome. Um, and by the way, congratulations and all the on on the swaps. Uh, that's uh, that's really fantastic. Uh, congrats on the launch. Um, so yeah, when when uh, uh, you know a couple of things you mentioned there. Um, one was uh, the possibility of doing things like. Uh, having data and and referencing data and so on. Uh, could you talk a little bit more about that and kind of what you envision there? Uh, also, totally fine if you uh, want to just keep it a surprise for the community in the future. Um, sorry, uh, having data and showing data. Could you expand on on that? Yeah, yeah. Like you mentioned, uh, you know, the, the possibility of using a snap to to um, you know look at uh, a data or kind of link reference to user data and so on. Um, I don't oh, know if you yeah. wanted to expand on that. Yeah, yeah. So, so one of the cool things about when, since snaps can show their own, since you get, they're both providing an API to websites you visit, and they can show custom confirmations. So every snap actually has the ability to um, implement its own selective disclosure algorithm. Um, now we haven't explored that as much as I'd like, but actually there's there's a lot of kind of low hanging fruit for us um, with the permission system. So for example, um, when you go to a lot of exchanges like Uniswap. Um, they don't know what your favorite tokens are, um, but your wallet does. We, that's like our job as, as your wallet is to, to have a list of your assets. So um, since we have that data available, there's opportunities for us to help broker that information. Um, there's, there's also opportunities for things like contact sharing or um, yeah, uh, pretty much any kind of disclosure that might be relevant to an application. I, I think once you have something like Filecoin, um, you know, it's possible the wallet has some, some sensor or directory of the files that you have backed up. It could be that a website has a file picker where actually it's not picking from your local system. Maybe, maybe it's picking from a cloud system. And so, uh, I, I don't know, just, just kind of riffing there, but you know, every, every protocol has its own assets and resources that, that a user might want to um, tenuously um, share uh, and selectively disclose. Um, so that's, that's field is like wide open. Um, that's awesome. That's, that's super exciting. Um, uh, and yeah, I, I can just think of a bunch of use cases from, from users holding on to, to their data to like NF, uh, NFTs and backing up, uh, people's, the, the NFTs that people have on their wallet and, and so on. Uh, that's really cool. Uh, do you want to maybe uh, speak a little bit more about the snaps or show some of the repos for the snaps platform, just so that developers that are excited about it can, uh, know what, a you know, if they want to go and write their own snap for, uh, for their own. Yeah, uh, yeah, totally happy to. Um, yeah, so right now our snaps beta, it, it is it is uh, showing a little bit of age, but the the fundamentals are are all the same. So here's our snaps beta wiki, and you can pull down. This is a it's a fork of MetaMask, and it supports these snaps. And so if you go through here, um, I, I recommend the getting started uh, uh, guide, of course, and. It'll teach you how to take down and build the uh, the custom build, and then how to start building your own snaps. And we've got a we've got a bunch of sample snaps um, on our own repo. So um, I, I think usually this the examples many of them will just kind of demonstrate one API. So like Hello Snaps just shows you how to call and respond with an API. Um, uh, IPFS was one of our first snaps. It it shows you how to persist and um, and withdraw a file. So your the wallet can actually host and access to an IPFS node. Um, 
A uh, custom token demonstrates how to render a token in the user's wallet, et cetera. And then, of course, what will be of interest to some people, oh, yeah, I have highlighted the Zondax dependency within the, um, the Node Factory snap. Uh, so Node Factory has a fill snap. If you want to try out the Filecoin snap today, what you would do is you would um, you would go through the, uh, sorry, where did I put that? Um, <laughs> Uh, right, right. You would go through the getting started. You'd install the MetaMask Snaps beta, and you'd uh, pull down the fill snap and, and try it out. Um, yeah, it it works. You know, it, it currently I think just provides a basic uh, send and receive uh, API. But that's uh, the beauty of these is that they're actually they're actually quite simple. Like, oh, all right. That's that's not the whole thing. Um, but yeah. Uh, so the uh, yeah the entire the entire snap. You know, it's. Here's the, the API interface that they're providing. So they allow you to get address, public keys, export keys, balances, message, sign messages, and uh, and getting gas. So it's it's fairly simple, but you can imagine how you could expand and add RPC methods for any any Filecoin related operation, uh, like like uploading a file, paying for that. You know, that's that's going to be when it gets really fun. Yeah, that's fantastic. Uh, that that's really awesome, and that that's super exciting. Um, uh, I, do you have any any uh, other snaps that you're super excited about uh, to uh, to talk about? Either they're public or oh, there's so many. Um, I I mean, when we when we announced this, like the whole point is that that as MetaMask, as, as any wallet, any wallet has to basically is put in a position where they're either picking and choosing like some select number of protocols, or they're getting left behind or something, and this snaps represents a third way where we can start inviting the wider ecosystem. So we, we were getting interest from all sorts of things. So this is, this is going to enable contract accounts for MetaMask. Um, this is going to enable, there's, there's some really cool scaling uh, situations going on in Ethereum right now. There's optimistic rollups, there's ZK snarks, there's uh, Starks coming from out of Starkware um, where they, they showed they've got a recursive Stark chains going. So if, as soon as you've got recursive layer two chains, uh, Sounds like scaling is going to get really interesting really fast, and this gives us a framework where we we don't necessarily have to anticipate every innovation. We've simply provided a, a framework through which those teams can really kind of run wild and freely uh, explore the, the limits. Um, so I kind of feel like we've held back a lot of scaling strategies in the past, and I think that this has the opportunity to really really uh, accelerate um, the rate of innovation in scaling and security. Uh, contract accounts, stuff like that. That's awesome. Uh, that's super exciting uh, future ahead. Uh, right on. Thanks so much for having me. Have fun.